Hi, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Welcome, everybody. Today is Friday. It's one o'clock, and it is time for What the Health is Wrong with You? Today, we have a really good topic. I see people. Oh, you guys were waiting for me today. Hi, I got people coming in and jumping on. Come on, jump on. Today, I am in the kitchen. Today, I am going to be making a juice. But before I make the juice, I got to tell you a little bit about what this juice is for. Today is everything from there, nothing from over there. Today is what the hell is wrong with you? And we are going to be talking about fibroids, PCOS, and hormonal issues. So get your chair, get your pen, get your paper, let's sit down. Fibroids and PCOS and hormonal issues is a big topic. Statistics shows that one in three women are dealing with these disorders. And many of you are dealing with fibroids. You have fibroids. You've been having them for years. You don't know why you have them. No one ever explained to you what it is and why you have it. You just deal with it. Then you have women who are dealing with PCOS, which is another hormonal issue that really is just overwhelming to the woman that she's experiencing and all these other hormonal issues. So today I wanna address it. I wanna tell you some of the things or some of the causes of why you have PCOS, why you have fibroids, why you have fibroids, why you're dealing with some of these issues and what we can do to help it. You understand I'm always about the solution. I am always about the resolution. I'm always about a natural way of the body recovering and healing on its own. Our body can heal if we give it what it needs. So for all of you who are suffering, women suffering with hormonal issues, we are going to address that today. So welcome, 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 come on in. And then at the end, when we talk about, I'm gonna talk about fibroids, I'm gonna talk about PCOS, I'm gonna talk about estrogen, I'm gonna talk about menopause, I'm gonna talk about all of this and a, a, a significant amount of time. I want to keep you here. I don't want to bore you. I want you to stay and listen. And even if this is not for you and you know someone who's dealing with this, please stay and listen so that you can help them. You can teach them or you can even tell them, listen, go back and look at the replay of this video for those who are dealing with these issues. So come on in, come on in, come on in. I see all the waves. I see the hearts and the loves. Thank you all for coming in. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Debbie Williams. I am a board certified nutritionist who focuses on skin health, hair health. I also focus on gut health, liver health, and kidney health. And why that? Because the majority of our health issues stems from a liver who's struggling, a gut who's disrupted, and a kidney who's having the hardest time. And when we go to our mainstream doctors, they're not looking at the gut, the liver, or the kidneys, and even our pancreas. They're not looking at those things. Our doctors are taking blood, they're taking urine, and they are treating symptoms. And this is no disrespect to our doctors because we love our doctors, but our doctors can tell you, yeah, we're treating your symptom. Yeah, you came to me and told me you had pain. So I gave you something for pain. But what I want to do as a holistic practitioner is help you understand that your body is talking to you when you're having these issues. The body is trying to tell you it's struggling. And if we can help the body get back on its feet, standing strong and tall, the body rewards you with a healthy body, with a healthy mind, with a healthy spirit. All of that, the body rewards you. So that's what we are going to address today. So I am, like I said, Debbie Williams, a board certified nutritionist. And nutrition is the lifeblood of everything that we do. And this is why I come and I do these lives. And this is why I have videos. I've been actually on social media now for over 10 years. So I'm not a new jack in here trying to do this. I have been sharing stories, health stories, and ways to recover the body and, and help to, in ways to reset your body, to restore your mind, and, and more so. Um, and that's what we are going to talk about today. Today, we are talking about something very very, very touching to so many people. And the reason why I'm doing this video today is because I get a lot of comments and women are like, can you please talk about PCOS? Can you talk about fibroids? And I'm like, oh yes, great topic. Let's address it. Last week we talked about menopause. And again, I will address all of that today. So here's the first thing that I want to talk to you about when we're talking about these hormonal issues. Um, most of you don't know where it stems from. And that's the point. Let's get to the root cause of why do I have fibroids? Why do I suffer with PCOS? Why do I have menopause? All the different 
different things. Um, but menopause is different because menopause is actually a part of life. It is a part of the change of life that all women will go through. Um, it is just something that we do, but everyone is unique. You will go through menopause differently. But one thing that I addressed last week that I want to address this week is that when we are going through the different parts of menopause, like some women go through the night sweats, um, some people, some women go through the, um, it's just so many different phases of it that you deal with. The, the cause of it is estrogen. Estrogen plays a major role in the development in your body. And when you are starting to change in life, your estrogen levels start to decrease. Well, estrogen also plays a role in, uh, it helps with your hypothalamus, which is a part of the brain that controls temperature. So when you are going through the change and your body is not producing estrogen on the level that it is, then your body temperature is off. And so this is why a person who is dealing with menopause will go through the cold sweats, um, will go through the night sweats, will go through the hot flashes. That's all because of an imbalance in the body where with the hypothalamus, your body is not producing the temperature. Your body is not balancing out your temperature, the cold and the hot. So you're dealing it that way. So one of the ways to help with that is to help the body handle estrogen, meaning eating foods, natural foods, that can help increase estrogen again for you, or that can also help your body to absorb nutrients well. When you're going through menopause, one of the things is you're also going through, in most cases, a nutritional deficiency. Now, when we talk about nutrients, I talk about nutrients a lot because that's why I am a nutrition, a nutritionist is to help you understand the role that nutrition plays in your everyday function of life. You can't live without nutrition. Nutrition is the fuel that ignites the engine in your body, mind, and soul. And when we say nutrition, what is nutrition? Nutrition are the things you get from the foods, from the ground. Nutrition is your calcium. It, it's, it's your minerals, it's your vitamins. So it's your calcium, it's your magnesium, it's your potassium, it's your iron, it's your copper, it's your zinc, it's your manganese. It's your sulfur, it's your cat, it's your um, cobalt. It's also, it's your B12, it's your vitamin A, it's your vitamin C, it, it, it's, it's all of that. That's nutrition. And so where does this nutrition come from? So in regards to minerals, your body cannot produce minerals. Your body needs you to give it these minerals. And when you give it these minerals, your body rewards you with a healthy, happy mind, body, and soul. But when the body cannot get these minerals, the body's struggling. So now you're struggling. So no, you know, you might deal with anxiety. You might deal with depression because there is a nutritional deficiency. You might deal with inflammation. You might deal with joint pain. You might deal with a lot of headaches. You might deal with hair loss. You might deal with dry skin. You might deal with acne. You might deal with psoriasis and eczema. Because when the body doesn't have enough of the nutrients that it needs, it cannot perform its job. It cannot perform its daily tasks. And the body system is very deep, it's very intricate, it works, it doesn't work alone, it has a whole system with the digestive system and the microbiome and all of these things work together for you. But when all of these things are off, we are off. Men and woman deal with these things. But today we're addressing the hormonal issues. And like I said, so when we're dealing with menopause, we have to look at estrogen and po I always have a problem saying, I don't know why I have a problem saying this word when I'm online. Progesterone, progesterone, progesterone. Last week, I could not get my life together to say it right. But estrogen and progesterone has a lot to do with the imbalance of why we struggle and menopause. And for, for many of you women that don't know, we also have testosterone in our body. A lot of women think it's just men, but we also have testosterone. So when these hormones are off balance, it's going to kick into different things in regards to you. Now, here's what I want you to understand. If you take away nothing else from what I'm telling you today, I need you to understand that hormones are regulated. The majority of your hormones are regulated within your body system. Uh, your gut produces a lot of your hormones, but your liver, this is, the t this is the part that I need you to write down. Your liver regulates how the hormones react. So when you are struggling with a lot of your health problems, it is the liver. Your liver is an unsung hero within your body. Nobody talks about the liver. Your doctor, when you go there, the doctor doesn't go, hmm, let's check your liver. But I'm here to tell you most of your struggles is because your liver is struggling. So how does this connect to your hormones? 
Because when the liver is having an issue and problem, your body can't regulate its hormones. Your body, your body can't produce its hormones. Your body can't do a lot of things because the liver can't. The liver has a lot to do with so many things. As a matter of fact, your liver has about 500 jobs that it has to do to you on a has to do for you, excuse me, on a consistent basis. 500. I don't know any other organ in the body that has that many jobs to do. The functionalities that it can do for you is incredible. And I don't know if I wrote, if I kept my list with me today, because the list is pages and pages and pages of what the liver, the, the role that the liver plays. So when we are looking at health problems, we need to address the liver first. So today in my live, we are talking about the connection of the liver to your PCOS. We're talking about the connection of the liver to your fibroids. We're going to talk about the connection of your liver to your menopause and your other hormonal issues. And again, I have my juicer here, which I don't know if you all can see this in some of it. I'm on three different channels. But my juicer here, because at the end, I'm going to show you how to make a liver healthy, liver promoting, hormone loving juice to help you get your body back intact. Now, understand, I can show you how to make this juice, but no, you can't just make this juice one time and think, okay, I'm good now. Juicing should become a part of your everyday life. I am big on juicing. I have written a recipe book on juicing. I will continue to write more books on juicing. I have studied food. Food is medicine, but I have studied food in the way to understand which foods play a significant role in which part of your body. So today when we're making this juice, this juice is relating to helping the liver to do its job well so that your hormones can do its job well so that you can do your job well. I hope that makes sense to you. But that sounds cute too, I like that. Um, but anyhow, that's what we're doing today. We're, we're needing to address some things. So let, let me get technical for a moment. A lot of times I get live and I forget stuff. So I always tend to write things down for you. So your liver can affect so many things. The, the conversation around hormonal health, it, it expands beyond just menopause. You know, it, it, it expands beyond the PCOS and endometriosis and, and hormonal things. A lot of it is what I'm wanting you to understand and address the power of this organ. Because like I said, the liver regulates so many functionalities within your day-to-day -day life and nobody's talking about that. This organ, this liver, it maintains your weight. The liver helps your hair to grow healthy and strong. Your liver regulates your cholesterol levels. So for those people who you always go to the doctor and the doctor's like, telling you that your cholesterol level is high, but guess what? He's not addressing, he or she is not addressing that it has to do with your liver because your liver has a lot to do with how cholesterol is produced in the body. Your liver manages your blood pressure. So for all of, the, all of you who have high blood pressure, again, the doctor's not saying maybe it's your liver and that's why every time we see you, your pressure is high, but your liver manages your blood pressure. So for those of you who have high blood pressure, we have to take a look at the liver. Your liver also, it removes waste and toxins from your body and, and so much more. So again, my purpose today, and I'm going to call this from now on, even though this is my what the health is wrong with you series, I call this one of my free classes. So right now you are a part of a free, a free class to teach you about your liver health, to teach you how to help yourself. I believe in my hashtag is self-care. This is where it all begins. And of course, self-care doesn't mean you can't go to a doctor, shouldn't go to a doctor. Yes, you should. But you should also understand and know your body. You should also be able to listen to what your body is saying and understand. Because if you listen to your body when she and he is talking to you, sometimes you might not need to run to the doctor. You can be like, oh, that pain right there. Oh, let me go get me some purple cabbage and let me make me a juice because I'm having these pains. That must be inflammation. Oh, I'm a little bloated. Let me make me a celery juice. Oh, this and that. This is what I'm teaching in my classes. So every Friday, tell your family, tell your friends, come and join my live at 1 p.m. to be a part of my free class. Um, one of the most important things that I always want to talk about, uh, talk about is about the liver is something that most people don't know, that your liver helps your body in so many ways. It stores, it processes. Um, and it processes nutrients. So it's like a whole manufacturing plant in itself. It also produces bile, which is transported to your gallbladder. So if some of you have had gallbladder issues, your liver 
it was your liver all along. And so what, what it does is it produces the bile, which gets transported to the gallbladder, who then moves it into the intestines. And when it moves it into the intestines, it, that's where it helps to break down fats and help to destroy bad microbes. So we can go on and on about the purpose of the liver, but here's what I want to share with you guys. Let's talk about the liver's connection to fibroids. So how many of you here have had fibroids? I know I have. I've had fibroids, but you know what? When I had fibroids, I was not a board certified nutritionist at the time. I remember, you know, every year I'd go to my nutrition, nutritionist, my gynecologist, and I, they would say, yeah, Debbie, you got fibroids, but they're small. We're not going to mess with them. And I would always go, How do I, why, why do I have fibroids? Where did these come from? No one could ever give me an answer. And I thought my, gyne my, gyne my gynecologist, he was fabulous. I had a male doctor, and I just thought he was the smartest person in the world. And I still think he's fabulous. But he couldn't answer any of my questions because I always wanted to know, why do I have fibroids? And I would hear other people talk about fibroids and it became a thing. And it seemed like women, especially black women, we were always saying that we had fibroids, but nobody could give us an answer to it. But not only that, even when I was told that I had fibroids, what should have been told to me is like, so Debbie, you got fibroids. So here's some of the things you shouldn't do. Because when you have fibroids, you shouldn't eat sugary foods. Sugar feeds the fibroid. And that's why a person can have a fibroid that once upon a time was the size of this, but now it's the size of a grapefruit. It's based off of your diet. You're feeding into this fibroid. And then eventually the fibroid is painful. It's, it's pushing on different parts to your uterus, your ovaries and different things. It's causing um, your bleeding to be abnormal and so many other things. The next thing the doctor's like, well, well, let's just do a hysterectomy. Well, let's just get rid of it. Now here's the deal. I, when doctors are always wanting to get rid of stuff, I always think, you know, okay, some things y'all want to get rid of. I was born with this. God had these things in our body for a reason, but you know, our doctors is an easy way. Push it out, get rid of it. But in regards to fibroids, my doctor, I started having some pelvic pain. It wasn't severe, but it was just pelvic pain once in a while. And so he said, well, Debbie, you know what? They've grown over the years because he's watched them for years. He says, we can remove these. And I was like, you can. And then he told me some of the benefits. And for us women, if you tell us no more menstrual cycle, we're like, oh, yeah, let's do this. And that was my reaction in his office. He was like, you know, it's not bothering you, but understand if I take fibroids, you won't be able to have any more kids. And I was like, what? My kids at that time, my kids were teenagers, maybe a 16 and a 18 or 15, 14 and 16. And I was like, oh, that we ain't having no more kids. Let's do this. Can we sign up now? Where can I sign up to get this done? I was very ignorant. And I'm, I'm just being, I'm keeping it real with you. I was very ignorant. I just wanted them removed because I was like, no more cycles. I ain't having no more kids. Let's do this. But now I understand that there was another way that I could have handled the fibroids. One, changing my diet. Eating certain foods could help shrink the fibroids. Um, eating a healthier diet, a whole based, a, a, a plant-based whole food diet could have been a world of difference of me having the fibroids. But again, that was my story. So what I want to share with some of you who are dealing with fibroids, I want to share some things on how your fibroid is connected to your liver health. And if we start detoxing our liver, focusing on cleaning the liver, cleaning the liver, focusing on things that we need to do for our liver, then a lot of the pains, problems from fibroids to PCOS to inflammation, to joint pain to high blood pressure, we might not have these things anymore or to the point where we can manage them. Um, so here's some of the things that I want to share with you where the connection with your fibroid. And I wrote them down so that I can say these right. For one, your liver acts like the hormone manager. It breaks down estrogen, which we talked about. Estrogen plays a role in all these issues. So an estrogen level has a lot to do with how, you, how and why your fibroids are growing, all of that. But the liver breaks down estrogen. And estrogen, that hormone, has a lot to do with how fibroids grow. So if, our, if we're doing things, if our liver can't detox, if our liver can't flush out, if our liver can't break down the things that it, it needs to do, then now the liver is off balance. And, and this is one reason why you can start actually starting to have fibroids and they can start growing bigger. If I wrote down here, if the liver is happy and healthy, it keeps estrogen levels in check which can help keep fibroids from turning into an unwelcomed guest. And it's very true. So again, we're going back to the liver. If we can focus on that liver, clean that liver, keep that liver healthy, you can see a difference in your entire mind, body, soul, system. 
And this is not just something that I'm saying. There are resources and citations from PubMed and so many uh, Harvard studies and, and John Hopkins hospital studies that has shown and proven the connection of the liver to when a liver is healthy, what it can do to help the body. And here's another thing I want you to know about the liver. The liver is the only organ in your body that can literally restore itself, replenish itself and renew itself. Our body is loaded down with organs. There is no organ in the body that can do that. Our heart cannot do that. Our pancreas cannot do that. The gallbladder can't do that. And the kidneys can't even do that. And you know we have two. And when we're sick, uh, if it's a kidney problem, what does the doctor normally tell you? Well, we can just remove one of the kidneys. You know you got another one. Which to me is like, yeah, but there's two there for a reason. But the liver is the only organ in the body that if you help it on its journey, it will reset itself and rebuild itself and restore itself and rejuvenate itself. And now when it becomes like that, you now, you got more pep in your step, you, you feeling good, everything is right. Everything is right. So again, a healthy liver will help to balance your hormones, which for those who are dealing with the change, the menopause, that can help you through your transition. Think of the liver as your body's super cleaner, sweeping away toxins and excess hormones. That's a great analogy. It's a top-notch detox process, means fewer chances for fibroids. So if the liver is doing its job, now mind you, our liver has its own built-in detoxification system. I've had people say before when, you know, a lot of times people have a, you've heard of a liver detox, but then you have these other people come in and go, that's bogus. The liver doesn't need a detox because the liver detoxes itself. But guess what I want to share for those who say that the liver doesn't need a detox. Like I said, it's one of the hardest working organs in the body. And a lot of times the liver gets bogged down. The liver gets overworked. The liver gets overloaded. And when it gets overloaded, it cannot function well. The liver, in my point of view, is your waste management system. So waste management means it's the sanitation truck that comes every week to pick up your garbage. But picture the liver... If that sanitation truck gets overwhelmed and one of the wheels break off, it can't do its job. That's how the liver is. If, if there's so much going on in your body that the liver can't do its job, then the liver's struggling. And the liver's like, I'm trying, I'm trying to help you, but I'm going down, I'm going down slowly, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. And then it cannot detox in the way that it needs. So yes, a liver detox can help clean and push out some of the things that the liver is like, I can't get inside of here. One of the things that the liver has a hard time to process is medication. Most medications have some kind of synthetics and chemicals in it. Our liver wasn't made to process chemicals in that way. So sometimes too much medication after a while just makes the liver like, <coughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I'm trying the best I can, but <coughs> you're killing me. So if we detox our liver, we can help push that liver and get all the gook out and help that liver help itself. So the, the liver also, like I said, the liver produces something that is called, in the pronunciation of it, they call it the SHBG, sex hormone binding um, globulin. This helps control how much active estrogen and testosterone is in your blood. And the more you have of this SHBG, the chances of fibroids growing. So when the liver is healthy, these things won't happen. The liver also plays a role in controlling inflammation. 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 It's a word that you guys, everybody knows it, but you don't know how to handle it. You don't know how to get rid of it. So we all tend to live with it. But I'm here to tell you, we don't have to live with inflammation. Now, there, inflammation is a way that our body protects us. When there's a cut or there's something, the body builds inflammation to protect you. But that, but that's one form of inflammation. The other inflammation is when the liver is bogged down, it can't do its job, the kidneys can't do its job, the pancreas, every, all the organs are struggling, then you have now a different type of inflammation. And this inflammation leads to so many things. There are studies in science that shows that inflammation, a lot of inflammation is the cause of all the health problems. So Hippocrates told us 2,000 years ago that every disease begins in the gut. But a lot of it also stems from why does it begin in the gut? It could also stem because of the inflammation in the gut, which is causing all of this to happen.
The liver helps with that. When the liver is in good condition, the liver can help to control inflammation. Since inflammation, as I call it, can be a party starter for your fibroids, a well-functioned liver might just keep that party from ever happening. So again, it goes back to working on the liver. And how do you work on your liver? The foods you eat and the foods you don't eat is how you help the liver. Processed foods make the liver work harder. Sugary foods help make the liver work harder. Drinking lots of alcohol and things in the body that makes the liver struggle. That's how you hurt the liver. So how do you help the liver? Changing your diet, eating more healthy fruits, healthy vegetables, cutting back on lots of fatty meats, or even for a time period, cutting back on meats. Now, let me say this when we're talking about meat. I'm, I've been a meat eater my entire life, but meat has changed over the years. Our meats are the reasons why we have a lot of gut issues. So why do we have gut issues? The main reason why we have gut issues is because our microbiome, we don't have enough of the good bacteria. In our, in our gut system, we have good bacteria, we have bad bacteria, and they live in a community within our body. We have trillions of them. As a matter of fact, we have more bacteria in our body than we have human cells. So we're actually more bacteria than anything else. But here's the thing. Certain things can kill off our good bacteria. So if you've ever had antibiotics at any point in time in your life, you might be in your 50s, but you last time you had antibiotics was in your 20s or teens. What had happened is it killed off the infection that the reason why you had the antibiotic, but it also killed off all of your good bacteria. So the good bacteria, if you've killed off a lot of your good bacteria, now within your body, it's not a system. There's no balance. You got more of the bad. And the bad is exactly that. It's disruptive. It causes, it's going to set off the inflammation. It's going to set off fires inside of the body. So this is why we need balance. So we need to continue having the good balance of good bacteria and the bad. They live together, just like us in our life. We got the good and the bad. We live together and there's balance. Now, I'm talking about meat in this instance. What has happened to our meat is that all of the, the majority of our chickens and our cows, they are being pumped up with antibiotics. This is what's been told to them. A lot of farmers, they have to do this in order to be a part of the federal regulated, in order for their farming practices to be approved, they have to give their animals antibiotics. So please understand when you're eating that chicken, when you ate that steak, and whatever you ate, you have also eaten the antibiotics that the pig and the cow and the chicken has eaten. So even if you're a person, you say, I've never had antibiotics a day in my life. Well, if you are a meat eater, I'm here to tell you, oh, yes, you have. So, of course, if by you taking in those antibiotics unwillingly or unknowingly, you just started killing off all of your good bacteria. And your good bacteria is there to build up your immune system. Your good bacteria is there to help build up your body system. Your good bacteria is in your body to fight off any problems that, that occur. Well, again, this is why 98% of us have gut issues are just finding out that our gut is disrupted. It is because through our life, we've eaten things that we didn't even know was causing us issues and problems. So when we are now going back to liver health, how do we fix this? We're changing our diet. We watch what we eat. And I'm saying, I'm not telling anybody not to eat meat. But when you do, look at the packaging. Go for the ones that tells you no antibiotics was used. Because you understand when you're eating the antibiotic, you're also giving it to your kids. And that means our generation of children are growing up there with a, a weakened immune system. And we just came out of a two-year situation where only the strong survived. If you've had a weakened immune system, then yeah, viruses were able to get in and take over. So we have to monitor and watch what we eat. So if you, again, if you are a meat eater, when you're buying your meat, read your labels. You're looking for... The type of things that says there are no antibiotics, there are no um, synthetics, there are no chemicals, there, there's, there's a lot of things that it says in the packaging that can assist you with that. But again, it, it goes back to the liver. All of these things can cause inflammation to hurt, to hurt the liver, who is the hardest working organ in the body. Now, the liver also helps in breaking down fats. I told you before, it produces bile, and it's very crucial in digesting food uh, properly. A smooth running metabolism means everything is in balance. 
including the hormones that could otherwise encourage fibroids. So the point of me sharing this with you is because I want to tell you, this is why you may have fibroids. Because if the liver wasn't able to help you through this, then a lot of things got in there to cause it. Also, fibroids don't like it when insulin is in control. And guess what? The liver helps to regulate insulin. It helps to regulate insulin levels. So keeping insulin in check means less inviting environments of fibroids. So most people who have fibroids, they also deal with insulin resistance. So again, the liver plays a major role in that. So I'm going to share with you, we're going to make a juice that is a liver healing juice, something that you need to incorporate, add it into your daily routine. If you want to learn more about juicing, I have a juicing course. It's a beginning juicing course. It's the benefits of juicing and it shares with you what you need to do to start incorporating juicing into your daily life, into your family's life, into your history. So that's my information there about the liver and the connection to fibroids. So now let me address how it affects PCOS. So polycystic ovary syndrome is more than just a medical condition. It's a journey that many women navigate through. And if you're facing it, you know what I mean, and you know you're not alone. PCOS is becoming more popular. It's a, it's a term that so many women had never heard of, and now they're dealing with PCOS. But PCOS affects how your ovaries function, and it comes with a series of symptoms that sometimes feel overwhelming. But then there's sometimes where there are no symptoms that you may not know about. Um, but at the core, PCOS involves a bit of a hormone imbalance. And again, remember, the liver has a lot to do with how your hormones are affected. So think of your body like a finely tuned instrument that in this case, the PCL, P, PCOS is playing a slightly different tune. These hormonal changes can lead to several signs. So here are some of the signs of a of, uh, PCOS. If you don't know that you have it, you might, and you know, go to your doctor and get checked out. Well, if you are a person and you deal with irregular periods all the time, um, and your periods are unpredictable, you just don't know when it's going to appear. Um, this could possibly be that you could be experiencing PCOS. Um, despite what the name suggests, not everyone that has PCOS has visible cysts on their ovaries, because most people, there are cysts on the ovaries. But some people don't have cysts on the ovary, but, um, but, for, but for those who do, they're, they're small, fluid-like sacs. Um, they're, they, they're not harmful in a sense, but it can cause issues down the line. So here's some of the things, symptoms related to uh, PCOS. PCOS tends to cause high levels of androgens. Now, this can manifest as unwanted hair growth on the body, on the face. Um, it can make your hair start to thin on your head, and it even can cause lots of acne. So this is some of the things of PCOS. And also PCOS makes it challenging for those who are trying to have a baby. Um, infertility tends to become a problem there. And PCOS is one of the most common causes of fertility issues, which of course can be an emotional roller coaster. But many with PCOS experience challenges like with weight, you, you're gonna deal with insulin resistance. Um, it's a higher risk for type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So. It's like your body is working against you, making it hard to manage your health the way you want to. But I'm just here to tell you, if we focus on our liver, focus on liver health, all of you who are dealing with PCOS, just try it, try it. Try the juices that I can, I'm going to give you. Maybe buy my juicing book or get the course and start eating better and watch how your life can transform. That, those are some of the things. So let me explain some other things about uh, PCOS and how it relates to the liver. Um, so think of your liver as your, uh, like a, a hormone bouncer. It's in there getting stuff out. It's like, yeah, get up out of here. It keeps those hormones in check. But in PCOS, um, if the, if you have too much of it, the liver can't get these hormones out. Think of, um, your liver in regards to PCOS. So with PCOS and insulin resistance, um, they often actually go hand in hand, but the liver helps keep the insulin levels in check. So again, just like when we talked about the fibroids, if the liver can do its job, then it's likely we can, we can get the PCOS under control. 
extra the PCR. Ugh, let me get my life together. So we talked about how um, your liver helps to break down estrogen, and, and, and if it's not working right, talking about the liver, estrogen hangs around in the body too long, which could start giving you symptoms for PCO PCOS. Also, because we talked about how the liver is your detox star, if it clears out the toxins, but if the liver can't do that, then this is going to cause issues to create PCOS. Again, with PCOS, um, PCOS can mess up your cholesterol levels. And remember, the liver has a lot to do with the production of cholesterol through bile. So there is another connection, uh, um, connection with your liver. Inflammation, like I talked about, the liver helps to control inflammation. And since PCOS is linked to inflammation, when we keep the liver happy, this can also manage your PCOS. So I'm hoping that you guys are understanding that the connection there where it is to the uterine fibroids and how PCOS all connects to your liver. Understanding liver health is very, very important. So now let's go into my juice. I want to share with you why I want to make this juice and why this is necessary for all of you who are dealing with hormonal issues, who are dealing with uterine fibroids, who are doing, dealing with PCOS. I'm using specific foods today, and I'm going to tell you why. For one, this is the purple cabbage. The purple cabbage is my best friend in the whole world, and the purple cabbage needs to become your best friend in the whole world. People have been sleeping on this purple cabbage for years. I have stories to tell about purple cabbage that you sit there and you laugh and some that you may cry, but we don't have enough time to go through it. But I always tell the story about my mom best. Um, my mom actually just had a birthday this week. Mom turned 82 on Monday. And I remember her at times telling me how she was having some pelvic pains and she would have these pains like right around here. And immediately I would always try to figure out a juicing remedy or maybe an essential oil like frankincense or different things that I can do with her to help ease it before I feel like, okay, mom, we got to go get a doctor involved. Well, the pelvic pain that she had, it was very consistent and she had had it for a couple of days. And I had just bought some purple cabbage. And I knew that in my research, the research had shared with me that purple cabbage was a natural pain reliever and that purple cabbage helps to draw out inflammation. Well, this is what I read in a study. And I, I read studies and I believe in studies because they're backed by science, but I hadn't, hadn't heard or saw anyone say that the purple cabbage actually worked. So I told my mom, okay, mom, I need you to go in that refrigerator and I need you to peel off one of the leaves of this purple cabbage. And I want you to take this purple cabbage and lay in your bed and put the purple cabbage here and let's see what happens. Of course, anything I tell my mom to do now, once upon a time, she was like, I ain't doing that. But now if I go, mom, I need you to drink some garlic juice mixed with something crazy. She'd be like, all right, go get me a cup. But anyhow, um, I had her to peel off some of the, of the leaves. She went and laid down and she played the purple, she, she placed the purple cabbage on her area where she was feeling the pelvic pain. And a couple of hours later, here she come down in the kitchen smiling. And I was like, how are you feeling? Well, I went and checked on her. She kept telling me she was feeling a little better. But finally, she got up. She wanted to come in the kitchen and cook dinner. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, the pain is gone. Oh, that purple cat is. Oh, that purple cat is amazing. So that made me feel good because you know what? I love studies, but there's nothing realer than the real. So when I saw somebody that was dealing with it and said that the pain went away, I was like, this is something I got to tell the people about. And you can see on my YouTube and on my Instagram and my TikTok, I have several videos that I'm like, listen here, this purple cabbage is the truth. So anyhow, with my mom, it got so crazy with her that whenever she got a pain, she made herself a purple cabbage patch. And what do I mean by that? She would go get that purple cabbage. She would get herself something to tie, wrap it around her waist or wrap it around like um, she would use one of those ace bandages. She'd wrap that purple cabbage around and after a while, the pain would go away. And so I'm here to tell you, if you're dealing with some joint pain, you're dealing with some kind of pain, peel off the purple cabbage and do the research. It's there. It says it's a, a natural pain reliever. And why does purple cabbage work for inflammation? Because it's drawing out the compounds in this purple cabbage is drawing out the inflammation. And one of the secret weapons in the purple cabbage, are it's called anthocyanins. Anthocyanins is a secret, secret weapon for the health. God knew what he was doing when he made 
these foods. This was our medicine. You heard the saying before, food is medicine, and it is so true. If we utilize our red foods, our purple foods, our green foods, our yellow foods, our white foods, they all have medicine in them, all of it. And as a matter of fact, for you guys who don't know, what before a pharmaceutical company creates a pharmaceutical product, guess where they go and get their original product? From a plant. So my point is, everything starts from nature. So we are going to be using the purple cabbage in this liver healing juice. Um, purple cabbage is also rich in vitamin C. It's rich in vitamin K. It's rich in antioxidants. Like I said, it reduces inflammation. And here's another thing that people need to appreciate for all of you people are that's on your gut health journey. Purple cabbage helps with inflammation in the gut. It helps to keep it helps to heal the mucosal lining of the gut. It also contains sulforaphane. And sulforaphane is a rich compound found in cruciferous vegetables. And sulforaphane has been shown. Now, this is not me saying this. This is science saying this. Sulforaphane has been shown to have anti-cancer properties. So what does that mean? It has anti-cancer properties. Sulforaphane prevent, prevent cancer cells from growing. So let's just say a person is dealing with cancer. If you're eating foods rich in sulforaphane, it prevents it from growing, which means that it prevents it from spreading. A fact that you can deny, cannot deny. And so for all of you, this video is going to be on my YouTube channel where it will live. I'm gonna put some of the source information, some of the citations there about purple cabbage so that you can see the stories, the science behind this piece of love in my life. I get purple cat. I eat it raw sometimes. Like, here, yeah, I'm showing you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I love it. The fiber. First of all, our gut needs fiber. And yes, when we make a juice, we are, the pulp is the fiber, but we're pulling out the fiber. But juicing is very important because it helps the nutrients to go straight into the bloodstream. Most of the time when we're eating, many of us have nutritional deficiencies. So what you eat is taking a, hard, taking a longer and harder time to digest, which means you're not getting the nutrients. Many of us have toxins in our body. Heavy metal toxins is going to block your body from being able to absorb nutrients. But when we're juiced, it's in liquid form. So it bypasses the middleman and all the drama, and it goes straight into your bloodstream. And your blood transports it to all the organs and glands. So that's why juicing is amazing because it's a transporter. It allows you to get the nutrients faster and quicker because most of us are having nutritional deficiencies. But anyhow, I feed cabbage to my dogs. I have two old dogs and they need more fiber. And I know one of them who she, she's been sickly for years. She's been with me an additional seven years when seven years ago, a doctor told me, yes, yeah, she's not going to live no longer than a month. And I went, I got hard. I was like, yeah, well, we about to feed her some real food. I'm not doing no more dog food and she's going to eat this and that. Well, seven years later, Roxy is still here. She old as dirt. She's feisty as whatever. And she, I feed her stuff like this. I feed her purple cabbage. I'm going to, I'm getting ready to share with you about the dandelion leaves. She gets sweet potato. They get oatmeal in the morning. They get sardines. They get omega-3 fatty acids. They get collagen. They get flaxseed. My dogs eat good. But anyhow, this is one of the things we're going to put into our um, purple cabbage. The other thing I want to share with you about purple cabbage it helps to lower your cholesterol levels. It's loaded with potassium and magnesium. Um, it also has a lot of vitamin A, which helps with vision. So for those who are having issues with their eyes, what? This is what you need in your life. Uh, the vitamin K in purple cabbage helps for blood clotting. So that's really good for many people. It regulates blood pressure. So if somebody who's dealing with high blood pressure, making a purple cabbage juice will change your life. I have testimonials on top of testimonials on I can't talk testimonials, testimonials of people who have tried my juices, have tried the purple cat, cabbage and have come back and said how it has changed his life. So we're using purple cabbage in our liver healing juice. That's our purposes for our fibroids, our hormones, our menopause and our PCOS. But we're also going to be using the dandelion green. Now, this is the dandelion green. And when you go to the produce section, you look for dandelion greens. Dandelion greens is a friend to the liver. Your liver loves dandelion greens. Your liver, when you feed your liver dandelion greens, your liver does, it is going to do a dance for you that you're going to be like, oh, ooh, ooh, what's going on there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's because of this. 
So we are going to be giving our liver dandelion greens. And again, don't take my word for it. Do research on dandelion greens and its power for the liver. And it's going to blow you away. So our juice is going to take, contain purple cabbage. It's going to contain dandelion greens. And it's going to contain a pear. Most people are sleeping on the pear. Most people don't eat pears. But pears, this little thing right here is powerful. First of all, here's one thing I want you to know. Pears reduce inflammation. So for those of you who deal with inflammation, eating one pear a day, you're helping your body. Pears also contain fetal nutrients, and those fetal nutrients is what actually helps your whole digestive system, your gut system, all that there. Pear, pears help your heart, it supports your brain, it improves cognitive function. So if you are forgetful, you're dealing with brain fog, you're dealing with things with your brain, eating a pear is what you need in your life. It helps with memory retention. Here's another thing for all of you who are dealing with thyroid issues. The pear heals the thyroid. And I'm gonna do a video on thyroid health because most people don't understand that the thyroid, which is a small gland right here, a butterfly shaped gland right here, it plays such a major role in your everyday function, especially weight gain and weight loss and moods and behaviors. So we'll talk about that. But I'm adding the pear into this juice because of the pectin that it contains. Pectin, by the way, helps to draw out toxins. It binds toxins. So when you're eating another fruit that has pectin is the apple. But when you're eating a food that has pectin, toxins like mercury and aluminum, which is hiding deep down in the body, are drawn out like a magnet. This stuff is like, come on out. I got you. You get an idea. So I'm using the pear for all those reasons, but also because I'm helping to flush out heavy metal toxins from the body. So this is all we're using for this juice, guys. We're also going to be using my Nama J2 juicer. Let me pull this in here. And this is my favorite juicer. It is a highly priced juicer, but it's worth every penny. If you are a person that's going to start to juice and your budget doesn't allow you to get a high-end juicer, don't get a high-end. I, I, you can get a juicer like a Breville. Maybe it's $100, it's $100 or less. But because you're going to continue to juice, you're going to want to step your game up. Now, why this juicer? One, the average juicer, even like a Breville, you got to put one piece in at a time. You got to work it in. You're standing it. It takes you a minute. This is, you know, a lot of the juicing machines, why people stop juicing is because of the cleanup. Well, the, Nam the Nama juicer has taken care of all of that. For one, it has this big mouth here where all you do is cut up all your food. Sometimes you don't even have to cut it up. You can put everything in it all at one time, put the top on it, walk away. You don't have to stand there and juice and, and model and juice and model. Put everything in and walk away. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to cut open my pear, but we're going to add, I've already cut my um, purple cabbage. So we're going to add my purple cabbage. I do need to cut up my dandelion greens. And so this is a whole dandelion green that I got from Whole Foods. It was organic. And always when you can, buy organic. And, and so some people say, I can't afford organic. But I will say this to you. Can you afford to be healthy? Is your, is your health worth an investment? Organic is what's, what we need. But even in organic, the farmers are still using pesticides, but not the same kind. It, and it really depends. On, on the farmer, but organic still is a better way to, to get your fruits and vegetables. So I'm adding in my, uh, my, my dandelion greens and everything, even the ends, everything goes in there. I'm adding in my, and yes, my hands are clean, by the way, I washed my hands before I got started. So, but if y'all want me to wash my hands again, I, I, I can do that. Hold on, hold on. Let's do the washing of the hands. After all, it is my juice, so if I wanted to have stinky fingers, I guess I could. But you got to do this right. So when you're in your kitchen, I want your hands to be clean. When you're in your kitchen before you cook, before you're doing your fruits and vegetables, I need you to get yourself a big bowl, and I need you to soak your fruits and vegetables in a solution of hydrogen peroxide and baking soda because that is what's pulling off the pesticides and all the chemicals and all the stuff that the supermarkets put on. Because the supermarkets add a lot of wax and things to our food products to make them look pretty and shiny in the store. But these are things that we're eating. But anyhow, so all of my stuff, I've already pre-cleaned it. So now we're gonna add in my purple cabbage to my Nama juicer. And by the way, I will give you a link if you're interested in this juicer. I actually love the, the team Nama. They are an amazing group. Uh, we, they're just everything I need and want. They, they like, Debbie, what you need? We got you, we got you. 
because I'm always talking about it. I'm talking about them. So I am going to put my pair in. I'm just cutting off the bottom and the top, and I'm going to cut my pair in some smaller pieces. And that's it. And it's even in instances, a lot of times, I don't even take the seeds out. My, my juicer is going to spit out the seeds on the other end. So here we go. Remember, this is a liver health juice for your liver. It's a juice that will help those who are dealing with PCOS, those who are dealing with even menstrual issues. These things can help with all of that. All right, let's get my juice started. Did you guys see the fabulosity of my juice set? Well, someone asked how many times a day can you drink this? I make a juice and I can, you can drink this throughout the day, but what I do want you all to know, when you're juicing, whatever you're juicing should really be the first thing you put into your stomach, your body, first thing in the morning, because once you're juicing, remember, it's cutting out the middleman. So all of the new nutrients are going straight into the bloodstream. So think about this, if, if nutrients are going straight into the bloodstream, First thing in the morning, that means your energy level is going to be off the chain. That means your work is going to get done. Everything you got to do is going to get done. The body feels fresh. And also, here's one big, wonderful thing that you need to know about the liver. The liver is the reason why you are gaining weight, can't lose the weight. The liver metabolizes fat. The liver is your personal trainer. So for all of you who've been working out, who got a personal trainer, who in year three with the personal trainer, but yet, when you don't work out, you gain the weight. Here's the fact. You disregarded your true personal trainer, which is your liver. So when we flush out the liver, when we eat foods like this, when we add fiber-rich foods to our diet, it's pushing out all the good. It's like you're giving our liver an oil change. And you'll find that you'll start losing weight faster. You'll find that you start losing weight without even trying because your liver is the reason why you have the extra fat in the first place. So as you see, my juicer is working it through. Um, it's looking good. Here's the fiber coming out. Also, the pulp, I would also tell you to keep your pulp. Add it into a fruit. I didn't say that. Add it into a salad. Add it, add it into different things. What I do with my pulp, I put it into my oven. I bake it on 170 degrees for about six or seven hours. Or if you have an air fryer or one of those dehydrators, you want to dry out the pulp. And then after you dry out the pulp, if you have a food processor, put the dry pulp in the food processor and it grinds it up like seasoning. So you wind up having fresh seasoning for your foods, for your salads, for your kids, for your animals. Because they, this right here is getting ready to get put into tonight's dinner. So we are almost done. And as you see, my hands are hands free on my nama. All I did was put all my uh, ingredients in the juicer. I didn't have to sit there and put one and put more and put one. I could have put this away. If y'all wasn't here, I would have went upstairs and started doing something else and come back down to this later. But I need to stay here for you guys. So I think we are almost done in regards to my juice. I don't know if you guys can see, but pouring to me is always the best part. I'm going to turn this around so y'all can see the beautiful juice that comes out of my juicer. I don't know if you guys can see that on this computer. So here we go. So here, oh, look at that deliciousness. I got to say something for my mom because mom always, she's my tester for everything. I made a, a, a juicing recipe book and I know you guys are like, Debbie, we've been waiting for that book. I am such a perfectionist. I get on my own nerves. The book was ready to go. They sent it to me. I looked at the cover and I was like, mm -mm, I don't like that. I don't like that title no more. So now we went back to square one and I need to, I need to work on that. You know, we all got things we got to work on. I, I got to work on that, having to be perfect. It don't need to be, but I, I, I got to work on that. But anyhow, here is the juice that I made. And someone said, how, how often do you drink it? Well, usually, and I know how I juice. So I only made enough for one or two servings. So, and I actually love adding the pear into it because it gave it a sweet. Now, when you're drinking purple cabbage, it does have an earthy taste. And I don't need people saying, I'm not going to juice because I don't like the way it tastes. 
And I'm going to disagree with you there because I'm going to say, yeah, but if your doctor gave you the nastiest medicine he could give, he or she can give you and say, drink this medicine two times a day for 10 days, you would do it knowing it was nasty. So when it comes to juicing, it might not taste like what you're used to, which is sugary and processed, but it's going to get the job done. So you, and after a while, when you start eating healthy, your palate changes. As a matter of fact, our tongue palate changes every 14 days. But when you start eating healthy, your body doesn't want sugar. Your body will start to resist salty things and salty will become too salty to you and sugary foods will become too sugary to you and you don't want those things anymore. But um, here's to my purple cabbage, dandelion green and pear juice that's here to help my liver and yours too. So let's see what this tastes like today. That's good. It's earthy, it's fresh. I can feel it going down, all the way down. Yes. Oh, and by the way, when you're drinking juice like this, when you're helping your liver, you're also helping your skin. So think about all of that, guys, when we're wanting to live healthy. You want a healthy life. Don't think about I'm not gonna do it because I don't like the way it tastes. We all want to live. We all want to live as long as we can. We all want to be healthy. We want our family to be healthy. We want our kids to be healthy. So if it means that it's time for you to make changes in your life, then make the changes in your life. If it means that you have to invest in a quality juicer, if it means you need to invest in some courses or some classes to teach you how to eat and live better, do it because that investment is, there's no bigger investment than your, your life. So I say that to say at the end that I am getting ready to do something called the 30 day liver liftoff. So for all of you that are dealing with PCOS, fibroid issues, menopause, the liver liftoff is something that you wanna be a part of. This is the second series to a few weeks ago, I did something called the seven day reset. The seven day reset was also, it was resetting the body because before the body can accept new ways of eating, before the body can accept a new life change, you got to reset it. It's a mindset. It's like you got to tell the body, mm -mm, we're not going to be doing that this week. Mm, I'm, not, I'm not drinking that this week. I'm not, I'm, mm, I'm not going to eat that Subway stuff. No, I'm not going to eat that sausage, that bacon. Yeah, no, no, no. So that's where the seven day reset comes in. It's to reset the body to understand that the body's about to eat healthy. After the seven day reset, the next phase of it is my 30 day liver liftoff. And why do I call it the liftoff? I call it the lift off because we're about to lift off all that junk, gunk, and bunk from the liver. So for you guys who want to join me in my seven, in my 30 day, in this 30 day program, I have created meals for you. You have 30 days of meals. You have 30 days of recipes. You have 30 days of food that help to detox and clean the liver. The 30 day lift off is not just drinking liquids. It's, it's, it's a detoxification class but it's about cleansing the body, detoxing the body, removing um, toxins, uh, aluminum, lead, and mercury. It's about flushing the liver. It's about helping the gut heal. It's all of that in a 30-day class. Every day you're getting something from me. You're getting inspiration. You're getting the meal plan. I send you the meal plans weekly. I don't, I don't send you 30 days of meal plans one at, uh, at once because most of you are not going to follow through. But if you know you're getting next week's meal plan next week, or the, the end of that same week, now you got something to look forward to. So, and it's a way of staying interactive with you. It's a way of being a part of this with you in this journey. We also have community classes. We also have where you're talking with me physically because I'm in the class with you, working with you on what's going on, what's working, what's not. Everybody's sharing this story. There's exercises that are there for you to do. And within 30 days, when I tell you this will transform your health, transform your life, I haven't had anyone to say that it didn't when they stuck to the 30 days. That's the thing. You got to stick to it. And this is why I do it in a, a community setting. And this is why I join in because many of us need to be accountable. When I have these type of classes, now you're accountable. Now you have to be a part of this because there's someone watching you. There's someone looking at you. When we have our Zoom class the next week, everybody's looking at you go, so how'd you do this week, girl? What's happening? It's not just women. We have men in there too. But I want you to join my 30 day liver lift. It starts Monday, March 11th. So you guys need to get in now because there's specific things that I need you to also get. Um, there are certain supplements and certain other things that's a part of it. So if you're ready to join now, there will be a link in the, at the end of this replay for you to sign up or you can go to my site, which is called the Digital Wellness Academy. 
and there's no the in there, right, Jay? Mm -mm. It's digitalwellnessacademy.com. You'll see right at the beginning, we are talking about the Live a Lift Off program that's starting on March 11th. Come on and join me for you guys who are dealing with the things we talked about today and even some of the things we didn't talk about. At the end of the day, the majority of our health issues begin because the liver is struggling. And when the liver is struggling, the gut will struggle. And when the gut will struggle, the other parts of uh, other organs and glands, the pancreas and the kidneys and all these other organs, they will struggle too. So I hope you guys enjoyed my class today. I have some other things to share with you before we get off this call. And yes, my drink is good. And I meant to pour some for mom. Oh, good, it's still a little bit in there for her. My mother definitely going to want some of this juice. I wanted to share the liver lift off. There's a link in the bio. You can go to the stand store. You can look for the replay of this on YouTube. And there you'll see the link to join. Um, March Madness sale we have, as you guys know, as a nutritionist, I also focus on skin and hair. For those who don't know why I focus on skin and hair, I got my start actually in the hair industry. But when I was seeing a lot of hair loss, I wanted to learn why people were having hair loss. And it led me down the path of nutrition. So you understand that your outer beauty begins with your inner beauty and it's about nutrition. So I have a hair care line. I also, we're launching a skincare line. All the things that it, it's all plant-based. Everything begins with the plant and ends with the plant. We have a March, a March Madness, because this is March, you know, and there's a lot of March Madness. It's called a March Madness sale. Uh, it's a BOGO. Buy one, get one for 50% off all of my oils. I've created hair oils, which is really good for all of us who have natural hair. My oils I developed for people who was experiencing hair loss and, and thinning, but the oil is natural based. And my favorite one is my coffee oil. So for those of you who don't know, coffee stimulates blood flow to the follicle, which helps the hair to grow. Because when blood comes, blood is bringing the nutrients. Remember I told you even with the juicing, when you're drinking, it goes straight into the bloodstream. And the blood, the blood now is transported to all the organs. Well, it's the same for your hair. Hair is a living cell in the body. Outside of the body, hair is dead. But hair grows from the inside out. So I created a coffee oil because coffee has the stim the caffeine has stimulation in it. And when we apply that caffeine infused coffee oil to the follicle, it stimulates blood flow, which is bringing nutrients, it's bringing all the vitamins, vitamins A, vitamin C, vitamins B12, it's bringing magnesium, potassium, it's bringing iron, it's bringing copper, it's bringing all those things to the hair cell, which now that hair, if it's been dormant, it activates it. If, and if it's growing, it's getting thicker, it's getting stronger. So I love it, especially for us who are wearing locks and braids, because a lot of times we tend to lose our hair around our edges. If it's too tight and leave it in too long. But why, if you're feeding your hair while you're wearing your beautiful natural style, you're keeping the hair healthy and strong. So this week we're doing a buy one, get one for 50% off of all of the hair oils, which is the coffee oil. I also have a pumpkin oil. The pumpkin oil I developed because zinc is the main ingredient in that. Zinc is what the hair needs. Hair can't grow without zinc. The skin needs zinc. Most of our zinc is actually on our skin. And so I developed an oil with one of the most powerful things you could do is using pumpkin. So I have a pumpkin oil that's made for hair and skin. And then I have my major oil. And all these oils I've had out now for over 10 years. Um, the other oil I have is called Pure 7. Pure 7 was my original oil that I started when I was still a hairstylist. And it, it contains everything to help the hair grow healthy and strong. It's feeding the hair. So all of my products are nourishing. It's, it's nutritional based and it feeds the follicle what it needs. The other things um, I want to share with you guys, where I'm always talking about nutrition. And I didn't talk about it today, but I do something in my practice called a hair mineral analysis. Many of you may know, like for corporations now, when they, before they hire you, they want samples of hair because your hair tells the story of your life. Your hair can tell whether you're doing drugs. The hair can tell so many other things. Well, in my practice, when someone is coming to me, they want to they want to see if they're nutritionally deficient. They want they want to eat healthy. They want to get rid of diseases. They want to get rid of. They want to stop taking medications. They want to do things. Before you can work with me, I need to take a sample of your hair because I need to see where you are on the nutritional level. Remember, I said in the beginning of this conversation. Nutrition, the minerals is what fuels your body, it's what ignites your engine. 
You can't survive without minerals, but your body cannot produce it. So when I'm taking samples of your hair, it is showing me where your calcium level it is, where your magnesium level is, where your iron level is, where your potassium level, all of that because your hair holds all of that. We say in our industry in the holistic world that a blood test is a snapshot of your body, but a sample of hair is the entire movie. Because I can tell you what's going on with your thyroids, your adrenal glands. It tells me what toxins you have in your body from aluminum to arsenic. Now with me having that sample, if you decide that you want to work with me after you get your hair mineral analysis, now I can tell you what the next step is. But even with the hair mineral analysis, if you decide you didn't want to work with me, but you just want to know what's going on in your body, you can also just buy, get the test, the kit from me. We'll send you a kit. We need samples of hair from the back of occipital bone. I personally work with the doctor who we send it to. When he sends me back the results, I write up a custom report for you telling you here, this is what you need to do. These are the foods you need to add into your body. These are the foods you need to avoid. These are the supplements you need to take and start. But then most people's like, mm -mm, I, I wanna work with you after that. But if you work with me, now we are working together. I'm doing deeper things. We're going harder. So this week we have the hair mineral analysis. And if you choose to get it, it is $30 off for the weekend only. And the code to get the $30 discount is analysis which is spelled A-N-A-L-Y-S-I-S. -S. But again, if you go to my stand store or go to, will they find that at the Digital Academy, Jay? The hair analysis, the hair analysis is on hair and scalp meds. If you're looking to buy my hair oil, you have to go to hairandscalpmeds.com. And there you will see information about the oils that's on sale. You can also order a hair mineral analysis. And if all of this is too complicated in this live, then send us an email. My team will respond back to you with all the links that you need. And the last but not least, this week, until I launch the skincare line officially, we're doing a 30% off my entire skincare line, which is plant-based. The main ingredient is aloe vera. And if you know aloe vera, aloe vera is good for everything. I have an entire skincare line that begins with aloe vera, my gentle face wash, to my hyaluronic acid, to my, um, I have a vitamin C serum, I have a retinol, all of that. And aloe is a part of all of it. It's an amazing skincare line. I developed the line because again, as a nutritionist, what I didn't see in skincare products was a nutritionist, a nutrition's touch. It's just like uh, if you see something, you buy a, pro a product and it says doctor approved, people are like, oh, the doctor said it was good. So I thought, hmm, I'm a nutritionist that focuses on nutrition. Why not? develop a skincare line that helps people understand good skin starts from nutrition. Good, healthy hair starts from nutrition. A healthy body starts from nutrition. So thank you all for staying on with me today. I hope you learned something. Oh, I thought it was time for me to go. They told me I ain't going nowhere yet. Okay, there are a few questions and then I gotta go because I'm getting hungry. What, what's the question? Is there a replacement for that they want to bring? Is there a replacement for dandelion greens? Well, in the form of a green, there's nothing like dandelion greens. Someone knows is there a replacement. But there is milk thistle, which is also one of the top supplements that you can use for liver health. But this person is asking to put into a juice. You can, my next, if you're going, if you can't do dandelion greens, I would tell you, I want you to do romaine lettuce. I know somebody was thinking, well, why can't you do kale? Well, I like kale, but I don't use kale a lot because kale has something in it called oxalates. And many people cannot break down oxalates. So we stay in most of our cru cruciferates has it, unlike the purple cabbage. So if you can't do dandelion green, I would suggest you do romaine lettuce. That's my next top choice for liver health. Anything else? How often can you drink the juice and is it okay to make the juice in a blender? So someone wants to know how often can you make the juice? You can make this juice as often as you want. It's a juice. It's a liquid. It's healthy. It's not one where you drink it one time a week type of thing. You can drink healthy juice all day long. But make sure you're using juice as a supplement and it's not trying to replace your food. You still need to eat. Uh, what was that last question, Jay? Uh, oh, like I said, you can drink it anytime. Uh, can you use the blender? Yes. Yeah, so for those of you who don't have a juicer, you can also juice. You can make a smoothie out of this instead of it being a liquid juice. The, the good part of the smoothie is you're going to be able to keep the soluble fiber 
Um, because here we get, we're dealing with insoluble and soluble, but when you're when you're using a blender, you're you're going to be using the fiber, you're going to be eating it alongside. But here's a, a thing: if you are a person who wants a juice, can't afford a juicer, but you have a blender, you can take everything and blend it. The only thing you need to invest in is what's called a nut milk bag. Google that on Google that or go to Amazon and look for a nut milk bag three words when you use your blender after everything is blended up you will pour it into your nut milk bag and then you will strain it into um something similar to this and a bowl you know in a jar or whatever that's how you get the liquid out but after a while that's going to get on your nerves and i would just tell you put your nickels dimes and quarters away until you can finally get a juicer but yeah you can do this without a juicer you can do a blender but you would need a, a nut milk bag so thank you all for joining me today. You will see me next Friday for what the health is wrong with you. Hopefully you understood today what the health was wrong with you. It was about your fibroids. It was about PCOS. It's about your hormones. It's about menopause. And now we had, a, we had a resolution. Make yourself a juice. Change your diet. Or come and join me on the 30-day Live and Lift. So hopefully I'll see you next week in my class. See you. Have a good weekend.